The space race is no longer about rocket launches. It's about satellites and the transfer of, inf of information. Data for global communication, weather and environmental mapping and security is where the competition is in both the public and private sectors. And with federal government interest in the sector rekindled only 12 months ago, Australia is still a fledgling market. But as Alicia Barry reports, there are some local companies seeing opportunities. There are about 200,000 pieces of debris orbiting the Earth which now pose a real threat to vital satellites. Space junk is a truly major hazard to all, all application of modern technology in space and most of our modern communications and navigation and a substantial part of our modern commerce is tied to space. Space research company Electro Optic Systems has developed one possible solution, lasers that pinpoint the location of debris and instantly send that information back to satellites so they can avoid a collision. With most of its revenue coming from overseas sales of data, the company hopes to benefit from the recently signed space cooperation agreement between Australia and the US. We've been working very closely with uh, US government agencies for the last 10 years and also with Australian government agencies and we would think that the coming together of uh, joint bilateral interests at the government level might even bring these two streams of effort together and we would be looking to cooperate closely into that bilateral partnership. A greater government focus on the space industry is also expected to encourage a lot of investment in niche satellite communication and weather mapping technologies. In developing uh, ap applications to cleverly use GPS, the timing signal from the, those satellites, to allow, for example, farmers to plough much more accurately and sow, and therefore the, uh, what they do becomes far more productive. Uh, it, 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 um, satellite communications is an integral part of the national broadband network. At the moment, most investment flows from the public sector. In this year's budget, the government moved to encourage space research and innovation by allocating $49 million to the Australian Space Science Program. And in the information age, new satellite communication and mapping technologies are increasingly important. The amount of information that we're relying on from satellites and uh, the way we're using satellite information is expanding at a, a phenomenal rate. And you experience it with communications and, and how that's working. Um, if you can imagine the next 10 years and how it's going to evolve at the same sort of pace we've seen the last 10 years, um, really, really big expansions. One of those major expansions is the National Broadband Network, which will roll out the only two publicly owned satellites in the country. Despite the potential, when compared globally, Australia is still a fledgling market. There's a lot more we could do. Um, I think the Australian public would be amazed at, at um, how much we rely on other nations for our satellite information and satellite capabilities. Uh, for me, I think it's a very, very important part of the future security and capability of Australia to have those kind of um, uh, uh, capabilities in the hands of Australia's government. With $256 billion of global annual turnover up for grabs, Brett Biddington says continuing government support is vital if Australia is to have any chance of taking even a minor slice of that. For the moment, there's no follow-on funding. All of the money has to be spent by the 30th of June 2013 and um, the likes of my association and others are encouraging the government to reinvest because there are going to be some very good projects which don't get up this time. But when they and others do, this might be one space race that Australian industry has a real shot at.